Yes. Wow. <laughs> Where's my water? You know, bracha is a big thing in the, in the, a lot of my books, my books, The Realizing of Unity, has to do with bracha. The Ari system, as my teacher told me, bracha is gematria et chayim. The main book of the, of the Ari system is called Et Chaim, Tree of Life, or Living Tree. The Living Tree. And you have to know all of Et Chaim to say one bracha. And one bracha contains all of Et Chaim. Mm-hmm. All of creation. All of creation is one Et Chaim. And, and every bracha you say, it's all... So that's what my teacher taught me. What to give teacher? importance to what... Huh? What one of my teachers, Rav Mordechai Atiyah. Later on, I had Rav Darzi, who was another level completely, who I lost two years ago, and who I was privileged to dive in with at the hotel every morning, inside, inside. Mm. The most awesome experience of davening that I've ever had in my life. Mm. Anyway, um, I don't want to over overdo it, but you can sing a bracha, mm. and you can luxuriate in a bracha. Some of my classes are that. Thank you. Amen. It's living in the moment with extra amplification of consciousness that the RE is all about. Sure, it's new age to talk like that. But they already gave us the, the, the vessels, the way to do it, in the Jewish way, to build ourselves up and to complete, complete, and, and to know that we're always never, never complete. And I'll, I'll show you, that. that's the text I've given you, if I ever get there. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, it, you talked about the sort of eliminating ego and so of creating um, identity in, in oneness. But individuality is maintained. Where it's maintained. So right. Here, Essence. So here's the, here's the question. I was just thinking, like, um, from like a biological point of view, the body represents us. Right? We have all, all of the things on body, but the heart is, the heart muscle is separate from you know, your toenail, although it has the same DNA, it's all one. Right? So, um, and you know, could say that I've heard that being said about nation. You know, Jewish nations and other nations also have, you know, sort of a correlation cosmically. But and, and I, I get that on some level this question comes from with the perspective of the ego still in there, but I'm not sure how to get over it. So, you know, if I was going to be, if I was going to choose a part of the body I would want to be, I would want to be the heart or the mind, probably wouldn't want to be the big toenail or the skin necessarily, although that's necessary, right? So how, not every... Um, fear has the same value, maybe? Like, who would want to be the appendix of, of humanity? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. God bless you. <laughs> I, I'm, I, 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 uh, because of my time limitations, I can't relate directly. I'd give you a half hour. I really would. And I will. And we can be in contact. And that's what I want. Come to Jerusalem. Write me email. I'll send you things, I'll interact with you, we'll do Skype, whatever you want. But um, I, I, I'm not capable, I'm not good enough to really answer you on the phone. It could come yeah. out, it's in my notes here, something about what you said, but I, couldn't, I, re- I wouldn't wield the phone for it. So let me read a little bit of what my notes for this class were and see if I can fill in. We're going to talk about God, he wrote in parts of theme, about the movement from cloud to trot to claw. Claw to trot to claw. It's like really a special thing to get that over. To communicate that to you. Let's see if I can if I can do that here. Where do I have that? You don't have this yet. And, um, what I'm what I want to talk about claw to trot to claw for. <coughs> claw means in the, the way I'm trying to get it over, is claw means undifferentiated unity. Prat is the possibility of the existence of 
of an individual, of, of, of a creature. Klal is the return into the undifferentiated unity, but with differentiation. The Tikkuni Zohar tells us that Ekiya Asher Ekiya is, is, can be stood, understood as a formula. And I have the source here and everything. The first Ekiya corresponds to Klal, undifferentiated unity. This is followed by Asher, which corresponds to Prat, differentiated parts and details. Which is again followed by the second Ekiya, corresponding to Klal, a return to a higher unity that allows the full expression of all its parts and details. In the 13 Midot, the 13 hermeneutical rules of Torah exegesis of Rabbi Yishmael, he didn't make them up, but he received them and codified them. So one of them is Klaloprat. When you have a, a verse that says, on the, pra, on, the, on, the, on the simple level, a verse says, you know, you shouldn't steal anything, and that includes donkeys, right? So let's say Klal and a Prat. Or there could be Prat and Klal. But sometimes it's Klal or Prat or Klal. So the, 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 the rule is like this. When a verse is written in such a way that cloud, it's a generic, all-encompassing term. It's followed by a prat, a specific particular detail, or a list of details. U cloud, and then again bo- followed by the same cloud, the same generic, all-encompassing term. Eyatadan, ela ke'ena prat. Application of the generic term the cloud is now judged, defined, modified, and extended solely in terms of the shared qualities that are inherent in the prop. What did you just say? Right. That the second cloud now is modified by the, by the qualities that are inherent in the details. I only know what the cloud is because of by virtue of the details. An example of this I write in my book about Ketorah on the incense, that there are four incense spices mentioned in the Torah, and, uh, and really, they're not four specific spices. Because of the fact that they're within a klal o prat u klal, it says samim, nata u shcheret de chelbana, it says tach lecha samim, take spices, it's a klal, nata u shcheret de chelbana. There's three details, nata, shcheret de chelbana. Samim, it says samim again, klal. The Torah is a weird text. And the way they learned it out is by paying attention to these types of things. It's not a normal text. So you get Samim, Samim. But this is different now because there have been three in between. And so what it means is that, it gets, that the details get lifted up to the level of cloud. Uh, I developed this more. Uh, let me see. But the movement from cloud to prod does not mean the original unity of the cloud is, of the whole is no longer here. It's just that it has become hidden, more hidden in successive stages in order to allow the world of individual creatures, specifically mankind, to come into existence. I'm repeating myself, but now I'm, I'm moving into a new way of saying it. In order to allow individual creatures to actively participate in bringing the world of Prat back to the great plot. When that happens, perhaps the greatest gift that the Ainsel wish to bestow on us will be realized. We will exist fully and completely as individuals within Ainso, which is in a sense a logical impossibility. How can so, which is boundary, which is defined individual existence, exist within infinite, which is by definition beyond boundary? But that's the miracle that Ainso wants to perform. That's the joy that Ainso wants to give. It wants to give individual eternal existence to each one of us. And again, once we get that, the creation becomes this amazing, not as Stephen Dedalus said in Ulysses, history is a dream or a nightmare from which I am trying to awaken, because it really is on one level, but it now becomes a joyous unfolding of consciousness.